Okay, we've got a little quick job we're going to do. This is a very simple, basic lathe operation. We've got to make some aluminum spacers. So this is going to be for our friend Cody. You know, he's always working on the, uh, the motorcycle stuff. And this is some uh, custom work that he's doing. He just needs some simple spacers. So this is the part that he needs the spacers for. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to drill this. We're just going to drill a hole 10 millimeter. That'll be for the, uh, the bolts here to clear. Okay. And then I'm thinking the OD. He said he wants the OD to kind of match this radius here. So I'm going to start with 20 millimeter on the OD. And if it looks like it's a little too big, we'll, we'll bring it on down some. Uh, somewhere between 18 and 20 millimeter, okay? So, and that's all it is. Oh, we got to part them off six millimeters. So the height of them will be six millimeters. And that's it. We'll do it over in the Victor lathe, use the collet chuck, and let's go over and get it done. Oh, I was going to mention, we're going to use the, uh, the Magnum, the Norseman Magnum drills. These are some drills that a viewer had given me. This is a metric set. So I think I've used one so far. I can't remember which one, but so we're going to use our 10 millimeter drill bit out of this. All right, here we go. We're going to use some one inch aluminum. I don't know the grade, but that's probably T6 aluminum. And we're going to use a high speed tool bit. I just put a fresh hone on it. So let's do a, we need to face it off and then we'll drill it, turn it and part them off. Okay, there's our Norseman 10 millimeter drill bit. We're gonna go, I'll probably go ahead and do this full length. That's about three inches around, I think that's uh, around 75 to 80 millimeter, okay? Always nice getting to use a drill bit for the first time when it's new. These are some cobalt split point drills. I'm going to have to work it just wanting to gum up on me a little bit. I'll just do a little bit, back it out and clear them and keep on going. All right, let's go ahead and get this OD turned down. So we're at one inch now. We're gonna take it down to 20 millimeter and see how that looks. So uh, 0.787. Just take a couple cuts to get it down there. check yeah we're about 900 we'll take another hundred and then uh, I'll make some finished cuts all right we're gonna strike us a measurement here So we're at uh, 804. All right. So that'll give us, uh, let's see, so that's going to be 14, about 17 thousandths to come off. Let just take, let's take 10, see what, see what she looks like. Okay, I think 
think that's leaving a pretty good finish there. We'll hit it with some Scotch Bright. Okay, 75, 85, 90, 93. So we got about about five thousandths. One, two, three, four, five. We'll just take five. That's not a critical diameter there. Just as long as it matches up good. Okay, so we're gonna look at it here. So it'll be, the spacers will actually be fitting there on that shoulder. Okay, I think that looks good. Real close to that radius right there. I think that's what it is, it's 20 mil. All right, so we're gonna leave it at that. So, got to set up a parting tool and we'll start parting them off. Okay, we're ready to part off. So, I thought I'd show you this. This is one of my high speed steel parting blades. I had a few guys ask me how, how this is set up. So, this is the multi fix style, it's the uh, dovetail style. You know, I call it like a double angle. And I've already got a nice, fresh hone on that tool. All right, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna touch this face and we want our spacers to be six millimeters wide or, or six millimeters tall. You know, I just call them wide. And you also, you know, I'm just gonna step them over. I'm gonna keep parting them off. So I mic the blade. That's a 1.8 blade, but it actually mics 0.128. So you take uh, six millimeter, 0 0.237, plus uh, 128, that's gonna leave us at uh, 365 thousandths. And that's what we'll step over each time. And I'll use my tail stock here with a little brass rod in there to catch them. And I'll probably just do a quick little deburr on the OD and then on the ID, I'll just use the uh, little Noga deburr tools. All right. I'm gonna do the first one though. All right, see there, I'm touching. I'm gonna do the first one and I'm gonna mic it and see how close it is. And then I'll know whether or not I'm good on that, on that dimension, if I need to adjust it up or down slightly. So, all right, we're gonna set our, our dial indicator here. And we're gonna move 365. All right, let's go ahead and get the little catcher in there and let's part one off. Probably ought to find a smaller file. That'll work. Okay, leave the carriage right where it's at. And uh, I'm gonna mic this, let's check it out. Ooh, it's kinda hot. <laughs> okay, so there's our first one. Oh no, I'm on that edge right there. Okay, 238. So I'm actually like a thousandths over six millimeter. That is close enough for me. So we're gonna leave that number where we had it set. What did I say, 365? Yeah. All right, so all we gotta do is just reset our zero and uh, you know use our analog digital readout right here. Two, three, 65. And that should make every spacer exactly the same width. I just come in and touch it a little bit and then you grab your file and just go ahead and radius the OD just a little bit, you know, break that sharpness. We're going to go ahead and stick our tool in there and we'll do us a quick little production part off run here. 
I'll show you a couple of them. Okay, so there's one. So that makes three. We'll do one more for you. One, two, three. Okay, so that makes four right there. I need to, I need to do five more, and I, I think I got enough maybe to get all nine at one time, but I wasn't sure. If not, I'll pull this out and, and uh, drill and machine a little bit more. Okay, I'll bring you back in uh, in a bit. All right, so there's our spacers, and he actually only needed nine of them, but I went ahead and, and parted off one extra one uh, just in case he drops one and, and it, you know loses it forever underneath the workbench. Uh, sucks to get that call saying, oh man, I just need one more, you know, and you've got the, the, the lathe all broke down. So we just got to do a deburr. We'll use our, our Noga uh, multi-purpose tool right here, multi-burr. And just hit each side lightly. I actually would like to use uh, this, this little countersinking deburr tool. It works really good, but it's right on the border of being about the same size as the hole, you know, 10 mil. So um, it kind of wants to leave a little edge there. So I just decided to go ahead and use this one instead, okay? All right, so let's see, that's the one we just did right there. working good so I'll deburr all the rest of those you see how uh, see how to do it there and then that's it so this is the uh, I believe he said this is the speed indicator for uh, uh, I know it's off Kawasaki probably a ZX10 maybe and I forget what mod he's doing but it'll go something like that okay all right so all right, Cody, I got you fixed up, man. I'll holler at you later, and, uh, you know, we'll we'll catch up. All right? This is another little job we've had in the shop for a couple weeks. I want to go ahead and get it done. Uh, it's another motorcycle flywheel, and I've sewed these before. i got another video on just this. I thought I'd do it different. I've, I've been using the four-jaw chuck, the last few that's been brought in, and actually indicate them in. And so I thought I'd show it to you since I'm working on it today. So I've got her set in there. I haven't indicated it yet. You can see we got some run out there. So what we'll do is we'll start with the face and go ahead and let's try to get the face dialed in. Try to get it within, you know, at least a thousandths. It's not bad there. That was 20 just to start. I'm going to use this lead hammer right here. Soft blow. I'm just going to try to anticipate the high spot as it comes around on the indicator so it's like right there with that jaw so as I'm watching that come around to the high you know I already know it's got to be bumped there so I'm tapping on it come on man do something Okay, now we're within a thousandths. It looks like there's a, where am I 
I think I'm hitting the edge actually. Let's see. And you can see there's a little bit of movement on the face and that's from it, you know, the factory machining that thing. So you just want to try to split the difference there. Okay, so right there we're, you know, we're the same. I don't know if you can see this. I know the glare with these things on video is horrible. But um, so it's basically zero, zero. So you come into this one, we're minus one. All right, zero. So that's one thousandth right there. Let's leave it like that. And let's move our indicator around here to the OD and get this indicated in. Then we'll have to come back and check our face again. So yeah, we got a good 90 thousandths that were out on this side here. And this is kind of a delicate part. You don't, on, on this side that I'm chucking now, you got to be careful and not, and not squeeze it too hard, but you got to have it tight enough to that it's not going to try to grab it and pull it out of there whenever you're turning it. Just keep working the lows and the highs. It'll bring it right in there. Sorry, then we'll go to the other jaws. Now we should be within a couple right here, about five. Okay. Not bad. All right, that's well within a thousandth right there. So, Check our face again. Come on. Okay, two thousandths. There's our high. Okay, there we go. We're wiggling within one thousandths there. So I'm gonna come back here and we're gonna do this one more time. I'm just gonna check this run out here. We're within one thousandths, okay? I'm gonna double check my jaws and just make sure that all of them are snug. And they're all tight. All right, so we're ready to, we're ready to do some cutting on this. Let's we'll see spin it see what it looks like oh yeah okay okay let's do some cutting I've already got my zero set what I usually do is come up to these little these machined spots here and I'll touch the indicator I'm, I mean the uh, carbide to it and then I'll back off ten thousandths so we can come we can come on up to that and watch our zero all right, and we're clear. We're all clear. The jaws are clear in the lathe. Always be sure to check that before you turn it on, okay? We're gonna run a, I'm using a 432 insert. These, these worked pretty good last time. This is that Sandvik. I don't know what grade of steel that is. I'm sure it's like an alloy, but it's it's pretty tough. So you gotta watch your speeds on on these here. But we're running 210 RPM.
chip stuck to the end of the indicator there, so I just, just kind of watch it as we're coming up. Okay. All right, let me get a measurement here. Got about 300, 300 thousandths to come off of it. thing chips want to stick right here all right I made me up a little shield right here with some some brass shim stock and that big Noga try to block the uh, chips from sticking to the end of that indicator Let's see if it works definitely gonna stick to the magnet <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that worked pretty good right there. That's the reason I use that Noga is because I can just turn it off and all the chips will just fall off of it. So, all right, we got about 75, 80, I want to take about 85 thousandths off of that. And... Okay, now we're going to take a quarter inch off the face. I just come down here and I've got a measurement that I make this outside of those holes. And uh, once I make one cut, I'll get in there and measure it and, and then finish it. So let's, uh, let's take a sixteenth. Making some pretty good chips there. This Speed our feed rate up just a little bit though. Okay, I got my di diameter there set where I want it, so we're just taking a few more cuts here, uh, 16th to pass, to remove a quarter inch off that face. We'll hit a couple chamfers on them corners and this side will be finished up. Okay, that's good. We're ready to flip it around. 
Okay, we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna chuck it on that area that I just machined. So I've got the jaw set now. Thought it did. Okay. Let's check that. Okay, two two thousandths. So let's see if we can make it a little bit flatter. That's it. Well, we're going to leave it there. So we're square against that shoulder that we turned. All right, we got about 40 thousandths. Just a couple. That's why I like to find a just bottom. The way I set the indicator in there, I can roll that dial around where I want to. I'm just tweaking the, the difference there with the needle jumping. Okay, we're true. We're gonna machine it right there. Good to go. Okay, we're set. We got my zero set on the indicator. Everything's clear, so let's go ahead and get this cut down and we'll be done with this job. Wrong speed, 210 there. See, we were running uh, that speed. I like the little shield right there, it's working good. Okay, last cut. And every now and then you get this 
a stupid chip will get caught in behind you and mess up your finish. But we just got a chance for that and then uh, we'll be, this will be through. Okay, there's just a, a quick look at the uh, finished job right there. Uh, this one I don't, I don't like the way that turned out because that chip got caught in there on that finished pass and it rubbed it, but it's, it's not going to affect anything. It just kind of hurts your pride a little bit whenever your finish gets messed up. But that's it right there. So that's another one done. And that's some of our Saturday machining.